imagine in your own life having a message so strong that it totally changes your life in a moment. We're going to take you through a major initiation. A great spiritual renaissance. You will be changed. And in the end, you will become a warrior. This earth is nothing but movies to me. The great spiritual language of the world. When we die, we die. But we also have to live when we live. Negativity is the enemy to creativity. Seeing them embrace the joy of creativity infused my own courage as a filmmaker. It's about the song. Will you sing the song of the new earth? Now it is time. <laughs> Recently, I got some bad news. It catapulted me into fear. But I soon realized my fear would only make things worse. To deal with what I was facing, I first had to face my fear. So I set off around the world to find out all I could about fear. Fear is an important functional element of the biological imperative. It is what motivates us. Is it possible that what you think as energy can actually create the physics of reality? By the time you start thinking about something, your fears get hold of you. If we don't deal with that, it'll end up somewhere in our physical body. So the body is continually behaving as if that's happening now. In other words, the body will memorize that emotion and the body will become the mind of fear. Which is feeding any form of fear. Fear, 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 it's fed. I mean, every choice you make in fear will get you more of the same. I discovered there are two types of fear, real fear and false fear. It's the false fears that are killing us. I learned how to handle these fears. And I also learned that not all fear is bad. Fear can be a motivating force for us to want to make changes. Well, let's actually lean into the boogeyman. What is the boogeyman? Why is the boogeyman here? How can I dance with the boogeyman? I started out choked with fear. Now, I'm no longer afraid. Come with me on my journey. You don't have to live in fear. everybody and welcome to Unify and Unify.org and Spirituality God While I am Debbie G. It is that time again. We are going to be celebrating the Illuminate Film Festival and today we have an exciting, exciting guest who's going to tell us all about fear and we're going to talk about fear which is I, I'm just captivated by the th this film's message. And I know that all of you are too, just from watching the trailer. Bill Bennett is one of Australia's most respected film directors. Over a career spanning four decades, he's made 16 feature films and numerous documentaries. He's won Australian Film Institute Awards for Best Film and Best Director, and been nominated a further 12 times. He's had two films in official selection at the Cannes Film Festival, four at Toronto and one at Sundance. He's won several major international awards, including the Crystal Globe for Best Picture at the Clarboy, Clarboy? Calavari. Calav oh, well, thank you. That, that was a tongue twister. Film Festival. Wow. Those are quite some accolades. Bill, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I'm just really excited for the audience to learn all about you. You know, right at the beginning of the trailer, it says that something happened to you mm -hmm. and fear. Can, can you expand on this? I know that we're going to jump into a little bit about what you've done and why you love to shoot documentaries, but I'm dying to know. Um, shortly after I, des I decided to make the film on fear, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. That was more than four years ago now. When I look back, 
I realized that I had symptoms probably 12 to 18 months prior to my diagnosis. So at this point right now, I'm probably five to six years into the symptom stage of the disease, if you like. Um, Debbie, it was kind of weird. It was sort of like the universe telling me, all right, Bill, if you're going to make a film on fear, let's do it for real. Let's do it properly. Let's have you experience real fear. And, and that's what happened. That's a big what happened to have a diagnosis like that. And I want to commend you for your vulnerability, authenticity, and your valor. Because, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it takes that in order to create a phenomenal film. So the, they brought the fear in. And first, I'd like you to tell me, what does fear mean to you? Oh, crikey. That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> right it means to me now different things to what it meant to, to me before I made the film having made the film now um and being able to spend time with people like Dr Joe Dispenza Dr Bruce Lipton Carolyn Mace um these extraordinary people um my attitude to fear now has totally changed it used to be that I follow the Franklin D Roosevelt line you know, when he said, the only thing you need to fear is fear itself. I've come to realize now, having completed this film, that you don't need to fear fear at all. Um, in fact, you can befriend your fear. Your fear is there to tell you a message. Your fear is there to help you grow. And if you really dig down and pull back all the layers and, and stare at fear, the core fear, the underlying core fear, if you stare at, stare at it, if you face it and find out what it wants and what it needs from you, then you can use that then to build a better life. That's extraordinary. I love how you were saying if you embrace it in the mm. essence that you ask it for its message is what I heard you saying. Yeah, this absolutely. Message, I, I think that's fantastic. And I agree with you. I'm in alignment with that. What did it tell you? It told me that there was nothing to fear. Um, what I learned from making the film is that there are two types of fear. There's real fear and there is imagined fear or false fear. And most of the fear that we experience in our daily life is false fear. Real fear is, is a biological imperative that's been uh, bolted into our DNA to, to help us survive. So that, that's, the, um, that's the fear you experience when you un, are under a very real physical threat. Um, but most of us aren't under that <laughs> under that threat every day, and yet we feel fear. And what I've come to learn, Debbie, is that the fear that tries to control our lives on a day-to-day -day basis is illusory. Um, I've learned so much, I've got to say, but one of the things that I've learned is that fear exists in the past through regret, and it exists in the future through doubt, and yet it doesn't exist right now. So if you can stay present, then you can largely live without fear. If you're able to find a way to shunt back those fears from the past and laugh at those fears in the future, then you can reach a kind of liberation, which is quite exhilarating to be quite frank. I really am appreciating that. I also am in, in deep alignment with this, that fear is regret in the past. That was brilliant. Or in the future, doubt. it's doubt, and which brings up that anxiety. And, you know, this is such a fascinating topic because in my, my experience, fear, I mean, I've been afraid of all kinds of things. And I... I love the, the idea that we can challenge. What if we challenged fear? What if we challenged it and, and to step beyond it? But the biggest key that you had there was to stay present, period. That, mm. that, that, and, and that's, but what about challenging that fear? Like, for instance, if I'm afraid to do public speaking, challenging that fear, 
Mm-hmm. And in- so what you, look, what you got to look at is what, what is underlying that fear. Um, and if you can if you can find what the, the root cause is, one of the things that I've discovered in the making of the film is that all fear is based on loss. There is not one fear that I've discovered that is not in some way based on loss. So fear of public speaking, in fact, is loss of self-esteem, loss of respect, um, loss of status. Um, it comes back to, to, to loss of loss of professional standing. Um, it all comes back to loss. So if you can come to terms with that loss, then the fear goes away. It's um, it's actually really quite simple. You know, like the fear of death is the biggest fear that most people have, and that's fear of loss, of course. Fear of change is comes back to fear of loss, loss of stasis, loss of stability. Um, you know, so so fear of abandonment is loss. Um, you know, fear of lack is loss. All of these things. So finding finding a peaceful point with loss if you can do that then so many fears just slip away this is brilliant and right now after what the world has experienced through the pandemic and through covid there was a lot of fear a lot of fear created everywhere there has never been a greater time than right now for this message to get out. And I love how that you are putting the words to it that that help us to all reach in and hold on to what you're saying. Fear is loss. And within loss, there's space. Mm. You know, that that's that's then been created. Mm. I want to talk about the I want to talk about the documentary, the movie. Can you talk to me about the first few scenes? What is it that what is it that you're bringing to the audience? What can they start watching for within the scope of of the the ones that you're interviewing? Um, look, I, I interview a, a broad range of people. They go from such luminaries as Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton, Carolyn Mace, Paul Selig, uh, Lee Carroll, and so forth, but. Um, I interview a, a very successful entrepreneur who talks about uh, fear in business and using fear, in fact, to um, to to grow, to, to further the entrepreneurial spirit. I talked to a mercenary, a highly decorated sniper um, who worked as wow. a mercenary um, and um, has um, been employed in all of the big big wars. And I've talked to him about fear in a combat situation. Um, I speak to Dr. Richard Schwartz, who is a professor at the Harvard Medical School, um, and he talks about fear from his point of view, which is he founded what's called the Internal Family Systems of Psychotherapy that helps deal with, amongst other things, fear. You know, so there's quite a broad range of people. Um, I talk to uh, a wonderful Mexican American woman who, from the age of four, was sexually abused by her father, and she she talks about experience experiencing that kind of fear and fear of her you know, that comes from her eth- ethnicity. Um, what I hope people get from the film is a greater understanding of fear, because you can't hope to get on top of your fear unless you really understand it and understand how fear works and why it works. And so what I do is I spend time examining the mechanics of fear, if you like, the biomechanics of fear, but also the metaphysics of fear, you know, because fear works both biologically, but also in the etheric as well. I love that. And I, I, I understand that it does definitely work in both. One of the things that you mentioned is the fear of change. And I, by golly, it's silly. We humans are goofy. I mean, really. The one constant in life is change, you know? But yet we, through behavioral patterns and taught and learned behaviors, have been, and that's another thing about fear too, is it's such a learned behavior. It's taught in, in not in the innate fear, you know, you're afraid of the animal or, 
you know, that type of thing. Even though I've seen children, quite honestly, Bill, they'll go up and play with spiders and, and, and bugs and they're fine with it. There is no fear. They have this joyful bliss that they just live in the now and appreciate everything. Mm. So, I mean, it's just, it's glorious. So I loved how you were talking about change. I can only imagine what it must be like for you right now to be a, to be facing another change in your life and, a, and you're embracing it. You're embracing it. How has this helped you with your own diagnosis and your own things that you're experiencing? How has the film helped you? Now, look, it's a really good question, Debbie. Um, what I do in the film is I, I stayed up front about the diagnosis. Um, it's discussed a little bit, but basically I use my diagnosis as an entry point to discuss fear on a much broader basis. So the film is not about me. It comes back to my situation towards the end. But but, but look, basically um, making the film has helped me because um, I say at the start in the trailer, um, I set off on a journey hoping that if I could get on top of my fear, I could get on top of my disease. And in part, so far, that has largely happened. Um, I see this, and some people might find this strange, because Parkinson's is a debilitating disease. Um, I see this as a gift. I see this as my opportunity to grow and to give something back to other people. I see it as an extraordinary gift, strangely, even though it's gonna to be tough and it is tough now. You know, it's been tough on the people around me and it will continue to be so. But, um, but it's a unique opportunity for me to see the world in a different way. And for me, because I'm a communicator, um, you know, I've developed over, over a long period of time the skills to be able to make a movie, I can, I can get it out there to other people so that they can they can look at their condition, whatever it might be, cancer or MS or whatever. Um, they can look at it in a new way. You don't need to be a victim. You don't need to be a victim. I'm not defined by my disease. I'm defined by my activity. Extraordinary. I applaud you. You don't have to be a victim. Fear creates the victim mentality so radically yeah. and it keeps us stuck and it keeps us stuck in the muck. Uh, I, I, I'm honored to be here with you and it's humbling to hear how you're embracing this. And, you know, it is going to be tough. Yeah, some some of it. But with an attitude like yours and and taking fear by the horns and saying, I've got this. And hoping you just really, I think it, you said it earlier, is about staying present and, and acknowledging the fear, making friends with it. You said you said to make friends. Mm. Yes. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Uh, the film, in fact, details how you can actually do that. Um, Dr. Richard Schwartz, the Harvard Medical School fellow, um, actually goes through the process that you that you that you can employ to do that. Um, it's been fascinating, Debbie, and I've got to say, you know, I've learned so much about fear. And I mean, well, uh, look, I, I hope to, I, I've made a previous film on intuition called PGS Intuition is Your Personal Guidance System. People can look at it on um, Amazon in the US, uh, iTunes, Google Play. It is, if you like, a prequel to this. Uh, it follows the same style and so forth. Um, I hope to make three three more films. I've now decided to make a series of five films. So intuition is the first, fear is the second. The next one will be on hope. Mm. One after that will be on purpose. Beautiful. And one after that will be on death, which I'm calling the veil. Oh, I, I'm so, so excited. So if I can get to make the five films, um, I feel like I've done something worthwhile. You know, you've done something worthwhile just being here at this short time with us here on Unify and what you're presenting at Illuminate. It's, it's fast, just fascinating to me how extraordinary that this is. It's huge. To me, this is forever. You're imprinting in time this message that you're bringing forward. I'm really excited about 
I'm really super excited uh, to watch your film that's on Amazon. I cannot wait. And I can't wait to be there this weekend. And tell us, tell us what everyone can expect at the Illuminate Festival. Um, well, in terms of uh, my film, I think it starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Uh, Debbie, it is a cinema film. I am a movie maker, you know, so it is a big screen, big sound movie. It's not something that, um, it's not it's not been made for TV. It's been made for that cinematic experience. We had a screening here last night. It was a sellout screening in Melbourne. It was a um, packed cinema. It was a huge screen. There was big Dolby 5.1 sound. I just sat in the back seat and just watched the movie again. God knows how many times I've seen it. But I just wanted to, you know, it was a great experience just to see the whole screen and the sound around and everything like that. So, so people who come to the to the um, the festival, and if they get a ticket, they they can experience that because the content is strong, but the cinematic quality of it is also very strong as well. And look, afterwards, there's going to be we've, we've got a number of people from the film that have um, that are coming to the festival. Sister Jenna, who is from the um, um, Brahma Kumar, Kum, um um, who else? Um, okay. James Van Prague. Um, oh, beautiful! My, Michael Sandler is coming for Inspire Nation. Uh, I believe Bruce Lipton's coming as well. You know, so there's going to be a number of people who are in the film that will be coming as well. And uh, I believe there are going to be workshops afterwards as well to deal with fear. So it's going to be what uh, Danette at the festival said is she wanted an immersive experience with this film, um, and so that's what they're working towards. I'm really excited about that completely. You know, one of the things that I love is that the film is giving tools that people can implement right now, which is wonderful. Now this is gonna be in Sedona, Arizona. So yeah. that's that's exciting too. Sedona is a beautiful place. You know, I wanna just thank you for being here with us on Unify and for sharing this beautiful creation with the world. But I'd also like to know what else that you'd like to leave us with? Oh, crikey. <laughs> I, you know, actually, I love that, crikey. It's adorable. I love um, that. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm American. We love we 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 love Aussies. Um, thank you. Um you know, look, I, I think Debbie, um we're human, right? You know, we, we feel fear all the time. Um, I didn't realise how much fear informed so many decisions I made every day um, in really unobvious kind of ways. And I guess if I could say to, to people, um, just ask yourself, is this a decision that's made with fear? Or with love. Ask yourself that. I love that. Ask yourselves, is the decision you're making with fear or love? And that's a really good check. The self-awareness tool, that one mm. rocks. And <laughs> Bill, you rock. This is amazing. And I am so excited for everything that you're bringing forward and for the films that you haven't brought out yet because I know they're going to be extraordinary. I love that you're bringing the cinematic experience in, big sound, big screen. Everybody needs to be present at Illuminate. Please check the chat because all the information's in there. So please make sure you do that. And I'm just really grateful and thankful that you are here with us and giving us a special insight to this film because this was a really unique opportunity that we had here at Unify to get to know you. And I am grateful that you decided to do that with us. Thank you. Oh, well, Debbie, like I said, it's an absolute honor. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. You're wonderful. All right, everybody. Remember, check the descriptions, check the chat. And all the links that you need to join Illuminate are there. Have a good evening. The healing is not so mysterious. It's built into our bodies. When people can truly see how amazing they are, 
their light will shine a little bit brighter. Film and media can really activate and transform the planet. We can change everything around us. This film festival was amazing to me. I'm just really basking in the spirit and love. I wanted to come here and support the filmmakers. It's a beautiful thing. This is about a shift in consciousness. You can't miss this festival. You need to come to Illuminate. I love that Sedona's doing this.